Can you imagine a city where streets are for people? Before I speak with award-winning best-selling author, Andrea Curtis, about her latest book, City Streets Are For People, and its brilliant illustrator, Emma Fitzgerald, who is also a best-selling illustrator and author. Um, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted on Tuesdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. Today's episode will be discussing, in the words of author Andrea Curtis, a kid-friendly manifesto about reclaiming our streets for people and sustainable transportation. And we'll have a better understanding of what happens when two creative minds, the author and the illustrator, come together. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Andrea and Emma. Thanks for having us. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure. It's my absolute pleasure. So to kick things off right away, um, Andrea, can you tell us what is City Streets for People about? Well, you kind of nailed it in your <laughs> intro. <laughs> I think of it, I do think of it as a manifesto. The, the title kind of says it all, City Streets are for People. Yep. It's about uh, changing the way we see our cities in terms of how we get around. And uh, I approach this from the perspective of somebody who's looking into the future and knowing that 68% of the world will live in cities by the year 2050. And so, uh, and we also know that transportation accounts for a huge uh, proportion of global emissions and air pollution. And so we have a really large task ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to look at how transportation um, affects our cities and, and what people are doing around the world to come up with solutions um, that, that are more sustainable, especially on foot and uh, on two wheels. And, and that's what I really loved about your book, um, not just because it's educational, you learned about a lot of what was happening, but also I thought it was so positive at the end of the book, you presented all of these tools that that can empower kids within their schools. Can you talk about those quickly first, if that's okay? Yeah, I mean, the, so th City Streets are for People is part of a series called Think Cities that Groundwood books is doing and um, the idea is that uh, kids can actually take action in their lives and in their communities and uh, we always provide ideas about how kids can can um, can take action both on an individual level in their families in their schools and then of course something so important and I believe kids really have the power to do this too is to talk to their uh, their uh, political leaders governments and and push for the changes that they want to see in their lives and communities so um, we we give all sorts of examples in city streets about things that kids can do um, so for instance getting uh, a group of kids in the neighborhood or families in the neighborhood to walk to school together in a sort of um, school bus or advocating for the school, the street outside the school to be car free. Um, we've seen this happening in different cities around the world and it's been incredibly positive. It builds community and connection and it's so much safer for the kids. Yeah, love it, love it. Now, as a writer, I mean, writing is a very visual process. So for you to hand your, you know, your precious manuscript over to an illustrator is like, is this stressful for you, Andy? Or how do you feel about it? You know what? I, I am so excited to, to do that. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't feel, I mean, I've been doing this writing thing for so long that yeah. precious <laughs> is rarely <laughs> how I think about my work. It's just like always in process. Mm -hmm. And um, the best thing for me, honestly, is when I'm done with, you know, done to the point where I'm ready to pass it on to my editors and then to the illustrator and seeing what another creative mind like Emma 
comes up with and how they animate those words. Um, and it's it's honestly a, a, a complete thrill because she brings a, a different uh, life and experience and um, craft to those words and uh, and 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 is able to bring them to life. So it's it truly is a thrill. And what about for you, Emma? Like you, this manuscript lands in front of you and you're to start adding the pictures. Like what's your process? Like how do you, where do you even start? Well, I was very lucky that I was actually living in Victoria, BC when I got an email and I was literally on a bike trail and I like, stopped on my bike to check directions because I was biking to Staples to buy new pens. And <laughs> I saw this email and, you know, Groundwood Publishing is such a dream publisher that I'd never worked with before. But honestly, the synchronicity of being in a city where there was so much, so many examples of exactly what Andrea was talking about. And I got to have this lived experience because I'm not some big bike person, but because it was so safe there, I could become that person that I never thought I could become um so yeah that lived experience really helped and there was just synchronicity there I think yeah. and then I did choose to do a retreat so I had an artist residency that I did so I was able to leave my everyday life and spend a whole week just generating ideas and not thinking about invoices or email <laughs> or you know just all those other things so that was on Vancouver Island but about two hours up island and that's something I've done before, depending on the project. Sometimes I feel like I just need to retreat. And then, of course, Andrea had such great research images and links. So I, but at that point, you know, we're not communicating directly. And that's something that happens in the process where the editor is more the in-between. I, th I think there was an element of saying hi, but yeah. there's also this element of, of keeping you a bit separate. And I think that actually helps in general. Because um, you don't have to be as nervous, I think, because the editor is going to give you the feedback and then you trust their feedback and you trust that they have the author's interest in mind. And so you, you don't kind of get in that situation where someone's saying, oh, well, this is what I thought, <laughs> because the editor is kind of looking out for you and giving you that response and that feedback so that, yeah, everyone, I think, in the end is really happy. Okay. Yeah. So does it start like do you present like a series of sketches, Emma, and they get approved and then you continue it further? Is that how exactly it so yeah, they're referred to as thumbnails or roughs. And okay. you know, I never got formal training as an illustrator, so I'm always a little self-conscious that am I doing this right? Because I studied art, fine art, and then architecture. But I think especially architecture is a very good preparation for that process because you know I worked with clients and you do start usually with trace paper and a sketch. And then it builds from there. So I can see a kind of relationship there. And meanwhile, in architecture, you got your feedback from your engineer. Oh, no, you have to change all of this. And so that preciousness, you let go of. And then the same with working with the publisher. You know, I had a, a totally different initial first spread. And I think the designer even really liked it. But for the overall story, when you, they put everything up on a wall, it's not going to work. And, you know, but you know that that exercise of doing that drawing that didn't make it in was still a valid and an important one. So, yeah, that, that's kind of some some of what goes on. Oh, I think it would be so interesting. You know, I've always wondered what goes on behind the scenes about that. So at this point, Andrea, you haven't seen any illustrations at all. <laughs> No, well, I, I do. Uh, Groundwood is really uh, neat. And I and I, it's so interesting to hear Emma say that it's a good thing to have that buffer at the beginning, because I totally get that. And you don't want the pressure of the author who may have intentions. But the thing that that I love about the whole process is that um, there's there's often I mean, I'm writing a book, the text is one part of the story, the illustrations are a whole other layer. And, um, and they can convey something that may be implied in the text, but isn't, isn't obvious. And that's uh, like, for instance, I think this is actually a kind of interesting example. So for instance, 
in, in City Streets Are For People, we wanted to get it across the idea that this, this sustainable city is aspirational, essentially, that, we, that most cities are not so sustainable and they're congested and, and polluted and, and filled with cars and trucks. But we wanted to posit that this is possible. And, um, and so uh, Emma had drawn this spread that's absolutely beautiful of this aspirational city. And it, and it ended up being probably the last spread, right, Emma? The, like the mm -hmm. last spread of text. And it, it originally came kind of earlier. And so to see, like she uh, was able to convey that transformation through the illustrations when it wasn't necessarily strictly part of the text. So I love that. I mean, like that's that's so fun to to have that collaboration, even though we really weren't talking other than through the the uh, research links and stuff like that. Oh wow! And Emma, for you as well, do you find like as soon as you start reading um, a manuscript, do the do you get visions right away of and pictures of the story forming for you as well before you get to the boards or? Yeah, I find it is a kind of a special kind of liminal time, and you kind of there's an excitement and a freshness and a kind of a, some nervousness too, which I think is a healthy thing and. I find some of those first marks, like I often doodle right in the yeah. manuscript, which is just eight and a half by 11 typed paper, right? So yeah, some of those things kind of stick with the project. Um, some get chucked out, but yeah, they're, they are kind of precious first moments and, and they can kind of set a whole tone for a book, I find. Oh, wow. Mm. It sounds, it just sounds like a really beautiful collabor collaborative process, really everything coming together. Ah, oh, very, very neat. And what about, like for you, Andy, have you, have your books arrived yet? Um, no, they haven't. You have yours, Emma? <laughs> well, we just have the one we, copy, we right? Have, yeah. 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 We're, we'll get them any minute, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Like I can just, I can imagine for, actually for both of you, like Andy, what's it like for you holding your book in your, in your hand? Like what's going through your mind? You know, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's always different than you see it on the screen. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you feel that way, Emma, but I, it's just like, all of a sudden it, it um, well, it's just more real, obviously that's yeah. kind of uh, clear, but yeah, there's a, there's a, a real thrill. I, um, the, the process is so long that mm -hmm. it, it sometimes I have to really force myself to sit, like sit with it and, you know, touch the pages, explore yeah. everything, because um, yeah, the, you, you've seen it so many times by yeah. that point. <laughs> and yet the tangible object really does have something that uh, you can't get from a screen. Yeah, and what about for you, Emma? What's it like hanging on to that book? Yeah, it's always exciting. And then there's an element of, oh my God, am I gonna see some big mistake that I oh. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't get caught and and generally that doesn't happen and usually it's just like a learning moment right like yeah. <laughs> and it's something that no one else will notice but you're like oh okay <laughs> that happens <laughs> that's but, funny because oh. I was just reading it today uh, yeah. before we talked and I was I had that same feeling like oh, oh is there gonna be a typo <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that hundreds of us didn't see already <laughs> Oh, so how long would it take from when you've when you've let go of the manuscript, Andy? How long does it take to actually get that book so it's flying out in the world, which is coming up soon? <laughs> yeah, um, about almost two years. Really, like a year, a year to two years, because Emma, you probably had the manuscript for uh, like eight months or something after before you submitted your final. Yeah, I'm trying to think because everything has been quite a blur. But yeah, it was it was during the pandemic that that I began the project, and I guess we're still in the pandemic, so that doesn't really help. But <laughs> it, it's it's been a bit of a blur. But yeah, something in the range of a year to two years. 
Yeah. Incredible. It's incredible. Well, um, it, it's a great book. Um, I love the message of it, Andy. It's beautifully written and Emma, it's, it's just beautifully illustrated as well. And I really loved the, your word whimsy because that's certainly what came to my mind and charming as well. <laughs> But yeah, so thank you so much, Andy and Emma. I really appreciated you come being guests on All About Canadian Books. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure. Links down below in the description books. Books, I did it again. In the description box to Groundwood Books, Andy and Emma's website. And also everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching and come back in a couple of weeks. Bye.